is 55 TV and we are nearly coming to the end of our day. We're with the lovely, beautiful Elizabeth. You've got great hair as well. What a cute think. girl you are. Um, you're producing um, Fountain Art Fair. Uh, tell me how long you've been going and how's it been the last week? Well, the fair began in 2006 in New York and we traveled to Miami that year as well. And they had about six galleries, including Casting Ray and Front Room here. And we've this is our first show that has really um, taken it to the next level. We feel like we're really trying to be ambitious with the art that we're showing and with the street art and the music and all the other projects, the performance art with Grace Exhibition Space. We're really just trying to you know, cast a, a wide net and you know, support our friends and yeah. it's been really wonderful. It's really great as things are, probably the last five, the internet's such a big thing to play in this and the social networking, but how small groups come together and they work with each other and they totally produce yeah. a material in-house. They don't need anybody else. Yeah. How is that for you? I mean, it's great, isn't it? It's, it's great. It's super intense. You know, it gets, you know, we call the office the war room. Things get really yeah, crazy. Sure. There's always something that comes up that you have to deal with, you know. But, um, you know, the energy of our team is, is wonderful and the energy that we we feel bringing our friends into this amazing space and seeing what they put together is it fuels this fire. Some yeah. people say we run on team spirit and it's probably a little bit true. You know, it's all, you know, financed from our own pockets, yeah. our own blood, sweat and tears if I can be trite. It's yeah. but it's really true. But I, you know, it's so fulfilling and when it finally comes together and you see everybody in one place enjoying the show and selling art and visitors coming in and saying that it's the best fair they've seen or the most fun fair they've been to that weekend. It just, that's what we live for. Yeah. It makes it all worth it. Yeah, we really like it. I mean, there's, just, uh, there's, there's not just a great curator show. The body of work is diverse, but it's a current theme going through everything. You know, it's great. But the entertainment you've had was great last night. Yes. We yes. got drunk, we hung around and danced. As did we all. It was really, it was a great, great party. It was really wonderful to have Ninja Sonic back. This is Ninja Sonic's third fountain with us, and they've really become part of our family, so it's always great to have them here. And Fab Five Freddy was amazing, and yeah. NSR is a good friend of ours from New York, so it was great to get him down here and get him on such an amazing lineup. And I, I, I saw everybody dancing. I don't know. I was dancing myself. It was a good, <laughs> good night. We're meant to be working. Don't tell anyone that. We just work. We don't have fun. Um, what's your, what yeah, else we have, do have fun. We do have fun and work. <laughs> what else have you got coming up in the near future? Well, we're going to be doing a pretty giant show in New York. We've got a big announcement coming up soon about a new venue in New York, a historic, iconic location. We're really excited to get that show going and really just bring more and more people into this fountain family that we're building. Right. Bring us down. We'll Get us to New York. During Armory Weekend, March uh, 8th through the 11th, we'll be there. Look for us, fountainartfair.com. This is 55 Factory. We are 55 T. We're at the Fountain Art Fair. You may just see us speaking with Elizabeth again in New York quite soon. We are 55 TV, we're at the Fountain Art Fair and we're with the lovely Gilf, who, this is just a secret between me and you, was partying last night and went home when the sun was coming up. <laughs> Doesn't she look amazing? 55 employees can't get away with that, only Nick can. Um, we love your work, we saw it earlier, yesterday, we were too tired to talk to you, but um, talk, tell us about you know, what your ideas are, where you're coming from with it. Sure, uh, well I'm a street artist based out of Brooklyn and uh, most of my work is uh, socially motivated, whether it's environmental or political or otherwise. Uh, I do it to put it, uh, I do put it out on the streets just really to talk about issues that I think are important and um, try to bring awareness to things that maybe people shy away from when talking about things. You know, if you have a visual, maybe you're allowed to process it on your own. Uh, and so bringing the work indoors uh, has been a good, it's worked out pretty well so far. Um, I did Fountain Art Fair in New York in March and now here in Miami and it's been really awesome. Right, so you are based in Brooklyn, that's where you live and that's where you run in that. Um, how is Miami for you? It's great, isn't it? Yeah, Miami's been fantastic. Uh, they put one of the pieces on the cover of Miami New Times, which was total shock and really, like, awesome. So it's been really great. The work is all over the, you know, all over the walls, all over the neighborhood, and it's been, like, so amazing to be surrounded by so much creativity and, like, really beautiful work. And, uh, you know, I was walking around last night 
late at night. And we were, we were walking. Staggering <laughs> around. <laughs> I wasn't that messed up. Um, but we were like walking around and everybody's just putting work up and the cops are just kind of strolling mm. by. And I'm like, okay, I'm surrounded by artists, I'm surrounded by awesome art, and I can put up whatever I want. It's literally like paradise. Like, Basel has been, like, the most amazing time for me. It's great. Um, what have you got coming up in the near future? Any projects or any shows? Anything you're working on? Any, a new body of work that you've got on your mind? Yeah, well, I'm working on um, some more sculptural stuff. Um, I've just kind of started going into 3D, and uh, there's a bunch of projects coming up for the springtime that are going to be incorporating uh, refused uh, paper products, whether it's cardboard or paper trash or, like, wood f filings, that sort of thing. I'm going to be rebuilding trees up the sides of buildings to kind of recreate things that have been cut down but, and just destroyed and wasted and thrown into a trash can. So it's all, everything's going to be reclaimed. And, uh, yeah, and then we're going to try and figure out a way to plant things in it so it actually does become green great nice to talk to you my girl you're looking good and i can't believe you look fresh as if you've had loads of sleep <laughs> um this is nearly it for us um fountain art fair 55 tv in miami this is 55 tv we are 55 factory and we are with ryan cronin wow we love your work it's great I know, thank you very much. It's uh, great to be here in Miami, FLA, baby. Um, talk to me about your work. It's big scale. It's just like it's just great. It's great. I want you to know all about it. Well, it's somewhat large scale. It's uh, it's about color, and my pictures are more about color than uh, the actual imagery. But it turns out that people are into the actual image and how simply it's translated. Um, to me, it's it, they're. There's the beauty of the color that makes them them great, you know, with a little bit of a, you know, humor involved. So, talk to us about the subject matter of your images and where you're picking them from. Yeah, well, they're uh, mostly, uh, you know, from my personal experiences and, uh, you know, uh, something a bit of uh, humor. I like to make people smile and, uh, I mean, life is pretty good, you know, and um, most of the time it is pretty good. And, and it just feels right, you know, it's usually a, an experience I've gone through or, you know, like almost killed by bow tie, choking on a piece of bow tie pasta. That could change your life a little oh, bit. Absolutely. We like it. Um, everything's good. That's a good statement to be making. Right. Um, love your rabbit. We love your massive inflatable rabbit. Yes. I, I think we got it dancing in the wind yesterday, but I was a little bit so... You were scared. Yeah. It, I was scared because I just had, you know, it just had it manufactured and it was a little out of control but it was it was quite an experience to see yeah. it kind of sure. you know uh, dancing well, around and yeah <laughs> and we weren't sure if it was going to let go or pop or what but it's all good i love it um what else have you got coming up any more shows another body of work where are you going with the stuff now yeah i'm showing right i got another show here in miami over uh on 24th street at the cohen compound it's we've uh we um we took over these box trucks and there's like installations and of, uh, of like nine paintings in a box truck and it's all a street art festival but I think my work can kind of you know cross over and translate um, you know in a gallery setting and you know in this in the street or public art setting you know which is because through the imagery it's simple to understand you don't have to sit and look at my paintings for 45 minutes to either know it's like shaking hands with like Ben Franklin you know, you either know if you like them or, you know, it could be like polishing the pewter, but you know if you like them yeah. or not, you know, sure. immediately. How do you feel about it? It's, it's now open, you've got all the tourists coming through town, all the kids and the children and everything. It's yeah. kind of changes, but the setup seems to be a lot more exciting. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think this time of year here, it's, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm from New York, so I only come down here at this time of year. And it's, you know, from what I understand, it's just this, you know, changes dramatically from what um, this neighborhood usually is throughout the year so it's quite fun I don't know how fun it is for the locals but I love it you yeah. know great nice to meet you Cheers. 55 factory we like his work it's colorful and it's it's out there 55 TV TV. I'm Chris the Sims, Naxxing Dompton, and this is Dave Tree. How are you doing, Dave? Fantastic. Thanks for coming over. You're looking great. I love your look. Give it the one up, one and two down, please. 
loving the trainers. They look dope. The jacket and the hat. What a smart guy. Um, everything's going on here. We like Dave Tree. He's a nice guy. Um, what are you doing in your artwork? Tell me. We love this, these pieces, especially here. Oh, well, first it started off with these four pieces up here talking about like how aliens have been manipulating humanity since the beginning of time. Because you know it. And uh, then the rest of it started kind of getting influenced by the, uh, the death of the American space program itself. All of a sudden it just went out with a whimper. It's like, yeah, we're not doing anything anymore. It's just over. Right. And uh, I find that kind of peculiar, surprising, and not well reported. So I'm reporting back to the masses with art about my dismay about the lack of uh, the final frontier for this country. Because, you know, we've made all these technological advances with, yeah. into the space, and now we're just going to, like, hand it to the Chinese and the Russians to take care of business and hope for the best. And it's not about nationalism either. It's just about, I just think it's more about... Uh, Everyone should have an opportunity to get to the stars, back to where we started, you know what I mean? So let's, like, why would they stop it? One idea is, came to me that, like, in 2012, they think the aliens are going to come back. So maybe they're just like, well, what, what's the point? They have inside information or something. What about they've, like, basically run out of money as well? Well, you know, they, dude, they got money. I mean, you know that breakfast cereal drink, uh, Tang? They have this thing, Tang? Well, right. they, NASA made that. I mean, they got to make a millions just on Tang. Right. Never mind, like, Teflon and all the, all the, all the inventions that they came up yeah, yeah. in the process of doing what they have to do. Can, they can't put a patent on that and make some cash? It's sure bullshit. We need you to do a bit of research and get back to us with what you find out. We're going to publish it online in a magazine. You're going to have your own fucking column, I reckon. Fantastic. You know, the people got to know. The people need to know. And you're not going to hear it from your regular media sources. You're going to hear it from this media source right here. TV. That's right. 55 um, TV. Talk to me about where you're from. And do you do music as well, don't you? You yeah. want to hear about that? It's exciting. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm an old school punk rock hardcore kid from Boston, Massachusetts. Been going to shows since like 1982. And uh, in 1989, I started a hardcore punk rock band of my own called Tree that lasted for like 13 years and we got to tour all over the country. We got to go to England and we got signed to like noise records and it was pretty fun. But you know, as a musician and stuff, you get paid a lot more, more different ways than you do with money. You know, it's like for some reason you don't get paid money. You get brotherhood, yeah, you get yeah, love, yeah. you get people want to give you stuff, and, but you don't get paid. You know, all the people, there's a lot of people in the way from you and what you should be getting, yeah. you know? You get somewhere to sleep a lot of time, but you don't get your rent money, do you? No, you don't. You have to like be like, damn, I'm going to make more t-shirts and sell these things on the street, you know, in front of that other hardcore show that's playing. Maybe the, maybe we can just jump on the gig and hopefully, uh, you know, sell some records. Yeah. You know, it's all about, you know what, it's all about doing what you love, and it doesn't matter if the money's there or not, because you're doing what you love, and that's the most important thing. And when you're doing what you love, and it affects other people, and they love it too, you get paid back in things that are far more valuable than hardcore cash. Because what you get is friendship, and loyalty, and love, and you can't buy that. We are totally down with that, and we totally agree, and buy, understand buy it. We don't want your money, we just want your friendship, and maybe somewhere to crash in some free beers, and maybe something else. Isn't that right? He couldn't have said it better. Um, what else have you got coming up? You don't live in Miami, do you? I don't live in Miami. I'm still uh, up in Boston. My band, Tree, just got back together after being on a hiatus for like 10 years. Uh, we just released a 42-song CD because it's like that. Cho it's called Choice Cuts, Lost Tracks. I gave you guys a copy. We're going to review it. Feel free to bootleg the crap out of it for all your friends in London and anyone else that likes it or is interested, feel free. Uh, treemusic.com, DaveTree.com. We love, you know, we we love to get your ears, your eyes, and your minds. We're gonna check it out. We're gonna cut up some of the music to the shows we're doing now. Can we do that? Because we're ripping everybody else's stuff yeah. off at the moment. Yeah, you don't have to rip us off. We've already been ripped off, and now I'm ripping us off. Uh, bootleg me from me, will you please? We're gonna do it. Awesome. This day tree, you. 55 Factory, 55 TV, Christopher Sims, Nick Thompson, and we're still going. Thank you. 55.